But you know, as I reflect back on Jacob wrestling with the angel, although we don't hear that it's the angel, but when he names the place, it has to do with having contended with God, of having seen the face of God and having survived. Remember, in the Old Testament, it was certainly believed that anyone who would see God face to face could not live. So different is the majesty and power of God compared to puny little us, sinful creatures that we are. But he has been given this ability to contend. When I get to heaven, I'm going to want to ask what the wrestling was all about. Till then, I don't have a definitive answer. But you know, it's an example to us. Anyone here ever wrestled through the night about something? I sure have. You know, that happens when we are facing forces that seem greater than us. Maybe anxious about what is to come, as Jacob was about having to encounter his brother. But that wrestling, whether it has to do with health and well-being, or the lack thereof, or a wrestling that has to do with tragedy that strikes family or any of our loved ones. Or think about all of those facing the difficulties of unemployment or underemployment, and yet the pressing nature of having to pay the bills and keep up. Those are people who wrestle in the night. And it's important for us to know that in that wrestling, we are not alone. God has not abandoned us. He desires to give us the very strength. Yes, we may walk away from it different. Maybe it won't be our hip that's set out of socket, but there may be ways in which we have been brought to our knees, and that's a good thing, that we might be reminded that we need a new kind of strength, a new kind of dependence, a dependence, again, rooted in our relationship with the Lord. You know, as I was reflecting on what it means to have an insight into the heart of Jesus, we must never take that for granted. Have a great love for the sacred heart and for the devotions that have been there over the centuries, certainly brought to a new level of understanding with the apparitions to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. But you know, this heart, so full of love, so on fire for us, has been appreciated and pondered throughout the centuries. But what he wants to do is he wants to attune your heart, my heart, to his heart. That takes time. It's more than just our devotion to his heart. It's our surrender to his heart letting ourselves be adjusted, letting ourselves be taken out of socket and maybe put back into socket. But it always calls of you and me for that kind of trusting surrender, not a surrender that is without difficulty. Again, anyone who thinks we can approach the things of life, especially the significant things that impact our everyday lives without concern or without care or without fear or anxiety is probably thinking too much of us as human beings. But the truth is, all of that is to be transformed as we once again surrender, once again trust our hearts to this heart who has loved us so much. As Jesus in those closing words of the gospel says to the apostles, pray that the harvester might have more willing to go out into the harvest. What he's saying is, as Jesus has over these last two chapters shown the very nature of the community he is creating, the church, he's asking us to recognize that we too have a part. We too must, in fact, bring about the harvest. Yes, he is about to send out the 12. Yes, they have a special role. 
but the rest of us have a role. And it has to do with, again, carrying the evidence of the coming of the kingdom to right where God has placed us. That's why our hearts being attuned to his heart is so absolutely important. Today, ponder. Be grateful for the ways in which God has brought you through the wrestling, those moments. And if you're still in the midst of that, wrestle with trust. But know that when the day is over, having come before God face to face, and that's the privilege we have whenever we come to the Eucharist, we should all walk away saying, I have seen Jesus. I have been before God face to face. And not only have I survived, but he has nourished me with what I need to faithfully follow him today. Let us ask for that grace and be deeply from the heart grateful. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, how privileged we are to know the merciful deeds of our Savior. Deeds on behalf of the people of his time, but deeds on our behalf today. Fill us with faith and hope and love and send us out to testify, to witness to that reality right where you have planted us. May our hearts today be attuned ever more finely to the heart that loves us so deeply. And we ask this as we ask all things with faith. In Jesus' name, amen.